Welcome to another episode of the Personal PR Show. And today we're here with Kusha from India. And we have a lovely co-host as well, our COO, Martina, and my biz bestie, Martina. Kusha, hello. How are you? Hi. I am doing well. Thank you so much for inviting me. And all thanks to my dear friend, Riley, who suggested and recommended my name so that I could be a part of this uh, interview. So I'm very, very excited. It's actually Friday evening here in India. But like I was talking to you about this, you know, a minute back that these are like my prime time hours of taking calls and working on projects. So I'm really, really excited and looking forward to having a quick conversation with both of you. Wow, this is super exciting for us as well. Thank you so much for making the time, Kusha, on a Friday evening. And I hope we'll would like to welcome you to Martina. I mean, you've been on the show so many times, but is there anything that you would like to tell our audience? before we get started with interviewing Kusha? Uh, <laughs> now, could you call me off guard? <laughs> I don't know yet what I want to tell the audience because, you know, okay. I'm on your show very often. So. <laughs> very often anyway. Yes, because I mean, um, yeah, Kusha, Martina is like my business bestie. She's my COO. She's my co-host. She does so many things with me. So uh, she knows everything that is happening in my business as well. So yeah, and the audience knows her as well. So that's why Martina is not introducing herself now because yes, everybody knows her already. Great. Awesome. So I would say, ladies, let's get started. I'm just checking on Facebook. Anybody is joining us i'm going to provide the link as well in case they want to join us on zoom but kusha should we start maybe with you introducing yourself what do you think so we already know that you are based in india this we already know but what else should we know about you (laughs) oh wow okay so let's just start quickly by telling you a little bit more about my background so i am basically a single mom i live here in india with my parents and my 12 year old son And uh, before I started working online, I was working in corporate for about 12 years. And I was working around trainings and delivering trainings to managers and employees and the entire staff related to insurance, insurance sales, insurance recruitment, and so on and so forth. So I, I literally, that was like my dream job, but I decided that I wanted to leave and be there for my son 24 seven. And so it was like a a light bulb moment, which happened when I realized that as much as this is my dream job, but I do feel I need to give more time to my son. And I took that big decision of my life of quitting my job and starting something on my own. And after, um, you know, and that happened in about 2014. And since then till date, uh, after multiple experiments, after multiple failures, I finally became a brand expert and confidence coach. So uh, I've been working as a brand expert and confidence coach now for almost four to five years. And I help primarily coaches and service providers to elevate their brand, to gain confidence to be able to bring out their story so that, you know, they can eventually do what they truly love to do or what they truly want to do. So this is something, uh, you know, like a quick overview about me and about what I have been doing up until now. Oh my God, this is so exciting. And uh, what I love the most, I love everything, but what I love the most is this double angle, right? So one side you have the strategy and on the other side, in the inner work, which is all about confidence, right? And of course, these two sides influence one another, of course, like the virtuous circle, right? Um, but yeah, it's amazing how you bring the two things together, because to be honest, like you will either hear of confidence coaches or of branding coaches, right? Yeah, so congratulations on doing this thing we're super Martina and I are super excited about that yes how did you how did you start on this journey how how did you have the idea of bringing this bringing these two dimensions together well to be honest when I was still in corporate I used to love you know learning new things so one of my bosses would always you know tell me that you should invest in yourself and one of the ways of investing in yourself is to keep learning new things keep adding on more skills Uh, you know, keep gaining more knowledge and keep moving up, you know, in the educational or the personal development ladder. So I kind of, you know, kept evolving and growing as I, you know, went up in the hierarchy of my corporate job. 
But on the other hand, I was also working on my own personal development because I went through a, you know, like a domestic abuse in my personal life. So I was moving out of my marriage. And when I moved out, my son was still four months old. So there was a lot of stuff on the inside, which I had to work around. I had a fabulous job, but my personal life, I think, was a mess. And I was emotionally, you know, not feeling um, at my best. I don't want to use the word unstable, but I don't think I was really, you know, at my best. And um, there was this stage where I decided that I wanted to get into coaching. So I, I actually got a life coach certification at that time from International Coach Academy Australia. So that's really where, you know, my first internal transformation began. And um, that's when I realized that, you know, first, it's all about finding answers within before you can really go out and do anything at all. So if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what is it that you that you can be or what is it that you want to be, uh, mm-hmm. it, it's it's life can be difficult. Life can live you, lead you or leave you with just questions. And mm-hmm. coaching helped me, you know, to find those answers within instead of, you know, struggling on the outside. So mm-hmm. um, so then when I left corporate, I, I really wanted to use my coaching and, you know, start actually as a coach. So I hired people, um, you know, online. I took courses online because I thought that this is exactly what I wanted to do. And initially, I was only trying to target Indian market. Now, in India, people are still not very familiar with the word coaching. So for them, a coach normally would be like a fitness coach. They don't realize that you can have somebody who can coach you for, you know, for your thoughts and for your internal questions and so on and so forth. So it was a huge struggle. And for me to even enter the Indian industry or the Indian market and talk about coaching was a big, big challenge. It was really tough. And I was doing it all by myself. So then I realized, in fact, I promised myself that I'm never going to do it for the Indian market. I'm going to find clients globally. (laughs) I'm going to make sure they're going to be people who will value the meaning of having a coach in their life or in their careers or for their business or even for, you know, like in life in general. So, um, so, but like I said, I was still struggling. I wasn't really having like uh, a formal uh, work lifestyle anymore so when I left my job I I partnered with one of my ex-bosses and we were still doing like trainings like corporate workshops so we used to go to different corporates and impart trainings conduct trainings for them provide them with training need analysis help their employees to move to the next level and so on and so forth but somehow that partnership also couldn't work really well because my boss still felt like he was the boss. So we weren't really partners. He was more like a boss and a supervisor kind of a, you know, partnership. So I think that was like a sign from the universe where it said that, you know, Kusha, why don't you go ahead and finally do something on your own? You know, that coaching, which you were talking about, maybe go and give it a shot, maybe go and try doing it on your own. And so I jumped in online and I started, uh, you know, like I said, I hired a coach And then we were together in that mentorship and that accountability circle. So I learned a lot. And like I said, I love learning. But then at that time, I was only learning. (laughs) So I wasn't even really able to make enough, you know, and uh, and time was ticking. So I really felt that, you know, I've left my job financially. I am not stable anymore. Okay, I'm emotionally feeling wow, because I'm with my son full time, I'm able to take care of my own self, I have that flexibility, I don't need to take leaves or permissions for, you know, taking leave from a boss, I can manage my life and my work on my own, but Mm -hmm. I still needed some income flow to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, so coaching wasn't happening, because I was nervous, I was shit scared. I couldn't Mm -hmm. even look at the camera, okay? I mean, right now you see me super confident, but at that time, I used to sit all alone in my room, stare in front of the dot of the camera, and I could not utter a single word. So this is Kusha, who loved to, you know, literally address an audience of 100 plus people and stand on the stage and do training workshops. But when it came to doing a video recording, Sitting in my room in front of a camera all by myself, I used to freeze. 
I used to go plank. I used to, you know, utter too many of those ums and you knows and ahas and God knows what not. And one of my friends gave me a feedback that you sound monotone. And I'm like, wow, okay, so nothing is working well. <laughs> Something is wrong. I need to fix it. But I don't want to go back to my job. And that was like a huge decision, you know, like my parents would sit with me, they would say, why don't you look for another job? Maybe you just wanted a little change. Maybe you're just bored of that one. I said, I was never bored of it because it was my, it was my dream job. I said, but I don't want to go back to that kind of lifestyle. I want to do something with what I know and what I'm good at. It is taking time, but I want to do it and I want to still give it a shot. And so from then I realized that I don't need to change my goal, but I could just make a little, you know, change in the direction. So because I was in training, because I used to design my training material, my courses, my presentations and everything, and I used to love doing it. I could sit all night and, you know, design work related stuff. So that's when I decided that why am I not using my design skills, you know, online and see if I can work through it. So slowly and gradually, you know, I started helping my other friends. Again, they were also newbie entrepreneurs. They were also trying to work something in the online space. They needed help with creating small presentations, webinar slides, and, you know, so on and so forth. So I started doing free work and then small projects. And from then till now, I've given packaged products, uh, you know, offers, from there, I've gone to VIP days, and now it's like a complete suite of, you know, offers which I have for my coaches and my clients. They're all done for you services. And in the middle of all this, I realized I could bring back my coaching because I went through a journey. I went through that entire struggle of starting my business online, and I could see there were so many other women who were struggling for the same thing. So that's where I felt that, you know, conf building that confidence to be able to create your brand, it's, yeah. it's super important because if you don't feel confident, you will not be able to show up. You will not be able to network. You will not be able to communicate. You will not be able to share your story. So there are so many things that your brand needs for you to yeah. start that business or even to scale that business. And one of the things is having that internal confidence. Mm -hmm. So that's where I was able to actually blend my confidence coaching with the branding strategies and the done for you service and, you know, combine it like a package. So it's actually two offers now. If somebody is looking for help with the coaching aspect of it, so there are one-on-one -on -one sessions. But if mm -hmm. somebody requires done for you services, like designing things for them, for their social media, website, and so on, so then those are done for you services or VIP days, et cetera. Awesome. Oh my God, thank you for sharing your story with us. Wow, we really feel part of it now because you took us through like the ups and downs of your life. So thank you so much for the trust. Thank and um, and when it comes to confidence, I love that. And I'm sure that Martina, I mean, I know that Martina loves it as well because this is something that she talks about all the time. And she actually gives it like a nervous system regulation um, angle. Martina, is there anything that you would like to comment on or a question that you would like to ask Kusha regarding this very topic of confidence and the nervous system regulation? emotions and so on yeah um i just want to comment and uh, reiterate what uh, kusha was saying in in your story right because i felt so much with you when you said like you know you know you did in your previous corporate job you know you were talking in front of people and it's, you were in your element and then you pivoted to you know your online business and then you're staring at the lens and are not able to really do anything there and it's obviously it doesn't make logic sense right because it's like it, usually people are more afraid to speak in front of a stage of people yes. but this just shows that um you know because i had the same problem as you had right and that just shows um how we when we pivot to our online business that what what inner work it requires mm -hmm. in order for us actually to do what we are so gifted in and i love that you brought that in this story because it's so you know so sharing so vulnerably um totally relates you know it's so relatable to to all our stories right because we all started out somewhere and i don't know anybody who like started their online business and everything was just like done here you know like confidence yeah. competence right everything because it's it's another total another world especially when you come from corporate so i just wanted to highlight this because i love when people share that you know because i feel like yes 
we need to hear more of such heroes journey you know of people because there's so many people that now like think about coming to to corporate right and it gives a lot of hope and also like a lot of groundedness of that this is not something that is just a fancy thing it requires no. so much resources. absolutely Oh my God, I love it. So how do you look like, if people want to work with you on both, in both dimensions, on both dimensions, Kusha, how, how does it work? Do you start with confidence and then when the confidence is there, then you're able to go out and create a brand and tell a story and so on? So um, I'll just quickly tell you what the journey looks like for anybody who, you know, starts working with me. And this is again, like, so we'll just talk right now about the one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So it's primarily like the three month, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching program, which people join with me. And what we're really doing is they, they already have a goal. So they are probably having some kind of a launch happening. They are probably, um, you know, at a stage in their business where they're still very new or they are at a stage where they have had success offline, but mm -hmm. now they're switching from the offline mode to online mode. So they're like literally blank as to how do we start? What do we do? How do we go about it? Um, they've maybe, like I said, they've bought courses, they've downloaded freebies, they've gone mm -hmm. through different kinds of checklists and, you know, all sorts of stuff. And they've got it all muddled up in their head. And what's happening with them is they're moving two steps ahead and they're coming back because they get stuck, they get overwhelmed, they get confused. So when they're in that stage, that's where I come in. And that's where I am literally like hand holding them. And we are moving step by step with whatever is their goal that they wish to achieve. So if it is starting their business from an offline to an online mode, so that's what we target. If it is about launching your new program, if it is about launching your own course, if it is about launching your ebook or whatever you have to launch online, even if it's your like entire. So I've had one of my clients who's launched her entire lineup of skincare products during the pandemic. So so, mm -hmm. uh, so just going through that entire journey with her, helping her, uh, brainstorming ideas with her about what are the opportunities available for her. And so, so the coaching isn't really where I will tell her what to do, but it's mm -hmm. just helping her to figure out what is it that she wants to do. And then extracting the fears, extracting those self-doubts and, um, and trying to instill all the strengths that she has because it's so easy for us to sit with our weaknesses and keep mulling over them that, oh, I'm not good at this. Oh, I don't know how to do this. I'm so bad at the camera. I can't do live trainings. I don't know how I'm going to speak. Or I still don't know how do I decide the pricing for my products. Or can I even do it? Do you really think people will buy from me? So they have all these kind of inhibitions. They've got all these kind of questions and they're all around themselves. And it's something which is their struggle internally. So, so the coaching sessions actually help them to, you know, to get rid of all those inhibitions by actually focusing on what their strengths are and what is it that they're really good at and then taking baby steps. So, um, so I have a question for both of you. Are you are, is any one of you a mom just, just yet or not? No. Do you I, have children? Yeah. Two kittens. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Bye babies. laughs> yeah so so the reason why i ask you is because our businesses when they're starting they're also like babies you know like how would you raise your own child that's the kind of journey you go through when you're starting your own business so so you have doubts you know you have questions am i going to be able to take care of my baby how am i going to raise my child there are so many problems challenges you face when you're raising that little infant and then slowly and gradually they grow and then you are so much more calmer because you've dealt with it you've handled it and by mm -hmm. the time you're having maybe a second child or a second business you know what the troubles are going to yeah. be you know what the struggles are you know what the challenges were you know how to handle it you know there's a thing called funnel you know there's a thing called a lead magnet but when you're starting all these things are like jargons you know you like oh is that, what's a lead magnet like is it a magnet to attract something what are we even talking about 
So moving from the offline world or the corporate world, there are ladies who come to the online world and they are as zapped and as blank as they can be. Hmm. And that's the entire journey which they go through in that three months time. So, and they've had successful, uh, you know, businesses started. They've had, so I had another client who wanted to launch her podcast. She was, I think she was stalling it for almost two years. Oh, I'm going to start my podcast. I said, what is it that is stopping you? I didn't just have the time. I said, what do we need to do to start it? So asking those questions, you know, leading them to those kind of, you know, answers, which they've got within them. You know, I don't need to tell you like, where do you go and what do you need to do to actually start your podcast? You know what you need to do. All you need is that little nudge, that little push. And you need to know that you have it in you to do it. So sometimes that's the stage where people stay stuck for most of their times and they're not able to move ahead with their business or their launch. And I feel that that's, that's the crucial one because it's like taking that leap of faith. So somebody needs to give that little nudge. And yeah. once you take that leap, there's no looking back. So I feel that's exactly what happens during that three month period. And some of those clients have even extended it for six months to about a year. So I feel that, you know, this is so essential because um, you are going through a journey of evolving yourself more than anything. And your business is also growing as you are evolving. And so is your business also evolving. So let's say, for example, you had a six figure business. But now what next? You know, how do you want to move to the next level? Do you want to start another business? Are you looking at doing passive income? Um, are you looking at starting from a one-on-one -on -one coaching to a group program? So you do have those next levels where you are moving to as a person because now you're tired of doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you're like, oh, I don't have the bandwidth. I want to chill now. I can't be attending to so many clients. So, okay, what's the solution? Let's do group coaching. So now you need to strategize now you, now, you, now you need to work on it. Now you have some different kinds of doubts in your head as to why I can't do a group coaching, you know? So, so it's that evol evolution which is happening within and it is coming out in your brand or in your business. So yeah. I hope I've been able to answer that. Well, absolutely, absolutely. I'm super curious. So at the end of these three months or six months or nine months or a year, right? What happens afterwards? Do you then go into branding? once you've completed, so to say, the confidence module? No, so it's all happening parallelly because when they're mm. coming to me, they probably need some kind of social media graphics help. They need an audit of their, you know, of their current branding. They want to get their brand refreshed or they are actually starting from scratch. So then if they're starting from scratch, we go through the entire branding questionnaire. We take them through their mood board, their brand board, and then we are creating if they need a logo. So then we figure out how do we need that logo to be created. So these can happen simultaneously. But like I said, it totally depends what their requirements are. So sometimes it is a combination of both one-on-one -on -one and done-for-you service. But just because the question was, what's exactly the confidence coaching happening? So I just you know focused on that bit. But it's yeah. totally possible that they come for both of them together or they just want either one of those services. Ah, I see, I see. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, because then maybe as the confidence um, grows as well, then maybe they can choose graphic solutions that are a little bit bolder as well because yes. they are becoming bolder themselves right yes. yeah yes. maybe they're expressing themselves better so then maybe their logo or um i don't know their um their color palette or so on will be able to actually mirror them more precisely yes. yeah i see, i do see the line between these, two, between these two things that is amazing so when we're talking about branding we're mainly talking about graphic the the, the visual yes. side of branding right yes Yes, completely. Yes, yes. Amazing. Yeah, I love the bridge between these two worlds. Martina, <laughs> what do you say? What would your question be around this? Yeah, um, my question would be what 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 is blocking the people most, um, you know, that you help them unblock when it comes to, you know, their, to their business? Um, yeah. And, you know, building this personal brand and, you know, what, what did you observe? Mm. So uh, my top three things which I've observed with my clients, which they're mm -hmm. struggling with. And I think it's an ongoing thing. It keeps coming back and forth and it's natural to happen. Okay. So the first one is, uh, you know, 
doubting their own, own self that can i even do it do i have it in me uh i've done a six i've i've you know i i have created my entire skincare lineup but can i actually create my entire wellness center so you know just those questions which keep coming back every now and then can i actually go to that next level so those internal doubts which you keep having every now and then that's like a biggest one for people and that tends to keep them stuck so they want to move ahead but just because it's a question they they just stay stuck there or they just fall back two steps so that's the first one the second one i feel is um it's a very strong one which is lack of consistency so if you're not consistent in this in anything basically but now it's just that we are talking about your business so you're raising a business you're raising it like a child you have to be consistent with your efforts you have to be consistent with your time you have to be consistent with showing up and you have to be consistent with whatever you said you want to do and you do it so people are struggling when they are doing it all by themselves because oh something happened today oh there was another thing happening today i missed out on doing this i couldn't do that maybe i'll do it tomorrow i know i need to do it you know so i'm like dude where's the consistency so we are lacking consistency and if you lack consistency you will lack results you will not be able to achieve those dreams those goals yeah. that that money income or that that traveling that trip that you were maybe dreaming of or whatever you put out on your vision board so that's the number 2 which is lack of consistency uh number 3 is um it's it's actually the visuals okay because i do know that they are all really good with what they have to offer to their clients but they don't know how to transmute or how to transfer that visually okay and i'm not saying strategically about their story or the messaging i'm saying visually because um we're in the online space and the attention span is this like i don't know can you see it it's like 3 no. to 5 seconds of time yeah exactly can't you can't see because can people are scrolling <laughs> people are scrolling every second and unless you have that kind of attention grabbing information they are not going to stop to to read or to know who you are or what you do so visuals is the key for your branding and visuals could be in any form visuals could be in your social media graphics visuals could be your your checklist or those lead magnets which you're looking for visuals could be the course or the entire program you're creating it could be your website it could actually be that uh you know that business card or a, a small thank you card or your workbook that you're offering for free so there are so many things which are part of your branding which knowingly or unknowingly you are missing out on just because you think i can do it myself or just because you think oh i'll get it done you know by somebody on fiverr or why do i even need it i'm just going to put it on a google doc and send it out but then are you here for the long run are you really here to to you know seriously build your business and your brand because if you are you need to invest in it and you need to invest yourself in it and once you're invested yourself then you won't think about you know that uh, i've got enough time to sit and design it on my own because you have to work on what is your zone of genius and you need to outsource the rest of the things which probably you're not good at or probably that is taking too much of your time so so these are the three things which pretty much you know are the main struggles number 3 is the one which people don't realize so that's where i have to come in and i have to let them know that you know let's work on getting your visuals you know uh, done in a much more cohesive way in a much more consistent way and something which is able to reflect you and something which is able to talk about who you are how do you help and who is the audience you know who is the target audience that can really take help from your services or your gifts yeah oh my god i love this yes and i am sure that martina agrees but did you expect <laughs> these uh, points is three items martina i didn't expect number 
Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Me neither. But obviously, it makes sense for for your business and and what where you're taking it. So totally. And I think with the first two, um, you know, I totally agree. You know, I can see this um, sort of within myself, and you know, and especially the consistent consistency part, right? Um, something that I was resisting for such a long time in my business and my brand building is like this consistency because it's hard in the beginning. There's so many unknown um factors and variables and it, it costs so much energy and being consistent yeah. is in the end of the day what is bringing the results so totally agree on that so thanks thank for you. sharing yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely. Wow, this conversation is going so well i love it we're learning so many things um and Kusha, because unfortunately we are approaching the end of end of this lovely conversation i do have one last question and this is a question yes, that you and I ask everybody and we always get different answers um, okay. The question should be a bit cheeky as well. Let's see what you reply. Um, okay, so what is something that Martina and I haven't asked you over the past, let me say, let me see, 37 minutes, more or less, but we should have asked you. So I have to give you a question. Oh my God, look at that. You guys are really cheeky. <laughs> so, uh, damn, okay. I don't know. What haven't you asked me? Um, yeah, basically like... Wow. Let, let, <laughs> it's a question after, what would you like to talk about something that we haven't talked about that you would like to talk about before we say goodbye <laughs> that oh, is very well okay thank you that's a, that's still easier so I think what we haven't really spoken about or we could add on to what we've currently discussed uh mm -hmm. you know is um is the ever-changing uh, world of the online you know of the online space the digital world and somehow, as much as it is changing, I still feel that the source or the root lies within. Mm -hmm. So, um, and people need to always remember this because even if you're doing multiple businesses, even if you're doing business offline, and even if you're doing businesses online, mm -hmm. um, I think that the root source is, is inside of you. And it's all connected with, who you are first. So you have to first think yourself as a brand before you can, you know, tell people that, that I've got this, you know, coaching or I've got this product, you know, first it's, it's you who is, you know, the brand, actual brand. And then when you realize it, when you're able to portray it in that manner, that's when people will be able to understand it or look at it or perceive it in that manner. So branding is, if we talk the basic of branding is how you make people remember you in the corners of their mind. Yeah. Okay. So are you able to leave a memory in the mind of your customers so that whenever next time they need help with branding or with confidence or whatever it is that you specialize in they should be able to you know the, the brain should be able to trigger your name yeah so if you're able to achieve that then you 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 know you you've created an authentic or you know an authentic and original space in the mind of your customer and that also happens. So obviously we need to, if, if I had to extend it, there's like that brand reputation, that's the customer service and so many things which, you know, which come into it, you know, just to make sure that you are able to keep that memory in the brain of your uh, customer. So, but like I said, the source is you. Remember, it's about you portraying yourself in a manner which becomes a memory in the minds of your audiences. So. Yeah, I love that because at the end of the day, what we're doing here is actually personal branding. It's not just branding in general, it's personal branding, yes. right? So totally yes. it needs to start from us. Like <laughs> there wouldn't be a brand without us, right? Yeah. So I Absolutely. love that. Thank you. Oh my God. Wow, I love that. Martina, do you have any final remarks or questions? No, I'm just um I just love the conversation around, you know, branding and the confidence um part of it, you know, and how it goes hand in hand and how it's actually really hard to separate those things because it's just, you know, our personality is infused in, let's say, even if it's like, you know, when we talk about the graphics, right? It's it's just something that goes in there. And I feel um that was such a lovely conversation to just um illuminate both um parts uh that are so 
are vital for, for our business. So yeah, and especially for this world that is fast and ever changing and we are changing as well, right? And where we have to learn to be flexible and allowing ourselves just to pivot uh, every now and then. And yeah, and just, yeah, absolutely. I have to agree. I totally agree. That is, I appreciated many things about this conversation, but that was actually the one that I loved the most because it's something that, you know, on one side it's unusual. People don't talk about it, but on the other side, it makes perfect sense. Like you see that it's really something that is super important in, in, uh, in a personal brand, in a, you know, you know, in, in business. Yeah, definitely. So thank you so much for bringing this angle to our lives, Kusha. Yeah, thank you. welcome, Jessica and Madina. <laughs> <laughs> this has been amazing. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, you're always welcome on a personal PR show if you want to thank come you. back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Of course, yeah, I'd we love can, to whenever. <laughs> yeah, we can find other angles. I mean, there are so many things to talk about with you. So yeah. I'm sure that we can find at least 15 new angles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. awesome. Well, I, I think I had a lot of fun talking about it today. And um, you know, every time I, I get on such kind of interviews, it's, it's like that last question. So I love that last minute challenge where you're suddenly like, oh, that's the new one, you know? And uh, I think that was amazing that you've got this kind of a last minute question which you ask. <laughs> so I love that. And I really enjoy talking about, you know, my work and also uh, knowing that how even you feel that branding is important and it has immense value in you know in our lives today especially in our businesses so um, mm -hmm. i'm really happy and i truly truly appreciate both of you for inviting me here today on this interview thank you so much thank you it was our pleasure yes awesome so kusha we will be in touch with you definitely yes. and martina thank you so much i will see you soon anyway because we're constantly in touch anyway and guys i will see you tomorrow i think tomorrow yes tomorrow for another episode of the personal pr show in the meantime have a good time bye everybody thank you, bye. Thank you. Bye.